Good morning, everybody. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is uh, there as a Tarun Singh. They will change it, sir. They will change it. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Should be Dr. Mahatma. I but think the link was for Dr. Tarun Singh, which yeah. was sent to me. It was copied and sent that. So they, um, from the INC office, they will change it. Ah, yeah, that is better. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Fine, sir. Happy Nurses Day, sir. Happy Nurses Day to everybody. Thank you. Your name is that right, sir, now. <laughs> ah, yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, then quickly. Yes. How many have joined now? Eleven. Okay, okay. I'm starting the webinar. Will you please mute yourself? I'm starting the webinar. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm starting the webinar. Will you please mute yourself? I'm starting the webinar. Good morning, everybody. In the midst of COVID-19 
Indian IMC is celebrating International Nurses Day to pay the tribute to COVID warriors. IMC pays a heartfelt gratitude to the COVID warriors who are relentlessly fighting the battle for our safety and risking their life to save us. Many of the nurses have paid a high price for the willingness to put their patients' needs first and tragically around 116 nurses have made their life. This we salute and applaud our nurses, especially working in COVID wards, as you are not only the warriors but saviors too. Thank you. And uh, I request uh, Lieutenant Colonel Dr. Savajit Kaur to welcome the speakers and the participants. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you, Patrick. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. It's been almost a year and a half, approximately, that the world is battling with one of the most deadliest virus that we have known. And it is during this time that the nurses as COVID warriors have been nursing patients back to health, saving life 24 by seven, working professionally, compassionately, and heroically. Indian Nursing Council applauds each and every nurse today on the International Nurses Day 2021 and wish all the heroes behind the masks and behind the PPE, a very happy Nurses Day. Today, we have gathered here to celebrate the birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale and disclose the theme. The theme for this year is aptly chosen to emphasize the role of a nurse, that is, nurses a voice to lead, a, few, a vision for future healthcare. This is aptly chosen to emphasize the role of a nurse and her contribution to the health system in the current pandemic situation. Our webinar today aims to highlight different perspectives of the theme through various eminent dignitaries who are with us either in person or they have joined us in felicitating the nurses of India. It's my proud privilege to welcome each and every one of our panelists who are here with us. I request our dignitaries to please raise their hands as I introduce you. It's our privilege to have a dignitary of distinct repute, Dr. Vikas Mahatme, Honorable Member of Parliament Rajya Sabha with us today. We're also hoping uh, to be joining soon by Dr. Subhar Sarkar, Honorable Member of Parliament Lok Sabha. He's still uh, busy and we do hope that sir will be able to join us. I especially acknowledge the contributions of International Council of Nurses President, Ms. Enneth Kennedy and CEO of ICN, Dr. Howard Catton, who have sent messages to our nurses from across the continent. We also acknowledge Dr. Leslie Mancuso, President and CEO of John Hopkins Jipaigo, who has also sent felicitations to the nurses of India. I welcome Dr. Roy K. George, President TNAI, who is with us today. It's my honor to welcome Mrs. G.K. Khurana, President, All India Nurses Federation. We welcome you, ma'am. We have with us this morning, Dr. Anna Frelson, CEO of Maternity Foundation and Dr. Tarun Singh, also from the Maternity Foundation. They will be talking to us about the new maternal health platform today. I also welcome our own organizing team that is headed by Dr. T. Dilip Kumar, President, Indian Nursing Council. We welcome you, sir. I also welcome Dr. Asha Sharma, Vice President, Indian Nursing Council. I welcome Mrs. K.S. Bharti. We have already heard her. She's a joint secretary in Indian Nursing Council. I welcome Dr. Punita, who is a senior consultant with INC and ex-dean CMC Velour. I also welcome Mrs. Abra Pearl, consultant with INC. I hope that I have covered everybody. 
A special welcome to all the participants who are logged in through YouTube with us right now and are here with us virtually. We welcome each one of you because we realize that you have taken out time to join us and to know more about the theme, though you're all so very heavily occupied in your own areas of work during this COVID pandemic. The theme of the webinar and the ICN seeks to look into the future against the backdrop of COVID-19 pandemic. And to hear more about the perspective of ICN on it, I now hand it over to Mrs. Bharti. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, now we have a video message from Dr. Annette Kennedy. She's an Irish nurse and she has an honorary fellowship from the Royal College of Surgeons in Ireland for 19 years from 1994 to 2012. She worked as a director of the Irish Nurses and Midwives Organization, president of the European Federation of Nurses. She was elected vice president of the ICN and held the position for four years before going on to become 28th president of the International Council of Nurses in 2017. Kennedy also worked as a commissioner for the WHO Independent High Level Commission on Non-Communicable Diseases for two years. Now we'll uh, webcast her. Uh, uh, video message. Hello, my name is Annette Kennedy and I am President of the International Council of Nurses. Dear colleagues, dear nursing colleagues in India, dear Dr. Dilip Kumar and the Indian Nursing Council, on behalf of the International Council of Nurses, the board and the nurses in 135 countries that we represent, we are with you in support and solidarity at this devastating time. We have watched on our screens the devastating effects that COVID pandemic is having on your country, on your people, and on your healthcare workers. It is difficult to see how nurses are coping. It is very difficult to watch the scenes of patients waiting for treatment, waiting for oxygen and waiting for ventilation and so many of your people die. I worry about the mental and physical health trauma that your nurses experience every day having to meet these challenges and having to work and think about their own health and the health of their families and friends. I can't imagine how difficult it is for them to make difficult decisions every day and to try so hard to work without breaks, long hours and without the appropriate resources and equipment. We want to support you in any way that we can. And we have asked and lobbied global nursing agencies and our national nurse associations to share vaccines with the Indian people and particularly with the nurses and the frontline workers. It is so important that the nurses are vaccinated and protected. We have also sought funding for, for our disaster fund in ICN to share with you, the Indian Nursing Council, to support your nurses in whatever way you think is fit. We know it's only a drop in the ocean but it shows our care 
and it shows our support and it shows that we are thinking of you and doing whatever we can to help. We would like the nurses to know that our heartfelt sympathy is with them and that we pray that this situation will improve soon. It happens to be India today, but it could be my country tomorrow. No country is safe until every country is safe and no person is safe until every person is safe. And for that, we must all work together. So we will do our best to support you now and afterwards, as we know that nurses, when they have time to reflect, will feel the brunt of this mental and physical trauma. I thank them for their work and for their commitment and for their courage and for their resilience. And I say that I see an and that all of us around the world, the family or nurses, are with you every day. Uh, that was from Dr. Annette Kennedy. Uh, I mean, uh, thank you very much for the solidarity shown for the Indian nurses, man. Thank you very much. Now I request Dr. Punita Izilarazu. Uh, the ex-Dean College of Nursing, CMC Vellore, and presently working with INC as senior consultant and is helping uh, INC in various projects. Madam, over to you for unfolding uh, today's theme. Could you please disable my screen sharing, Mrs. Bhatti? I'm, I'm unable to share the screen. Can you just remove the start <coughs> so that... Uh... Something that I can do. Yes, ma'am. Can you see my slide? Can you all see my slide? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Dear panelists and attendees, a very good morning and happy International Nurses Day. As I say, happy International Nurses Day, I do recognize the struggle our nurses are going through caring for our for COVID patients at the forefront, losing their lives, and also going through a lot of physical and emotional trauma. However, we want to wish them a very happy International Nurses Day, remembering all of them in our prayers, and also pray for all the strength, courage that they require during this, crisis situations. And it is my privilege to unfold the theme of International Nurses Day 2021. And I'm thankful for this opportunity. As you heard, International Council for Nurses commemorates May 12, the birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale as International Nurses Day. And during this day, a theme is chosen and 
to celebrate alongside providing resources and evidences. This day is significant to celebrate and make the public know of enormous contributions that nurses make in the health sector, which has become more vivid and clear during the present COVID surges. The theme for today, this year, is nurses, a voice to lead, a vision for future healthcare. This theme is also reflected in the WHO designation of 2021 as International Year of Health and Healthcare Workers. We know last year, 2020 was designated as the International Year of Nurses and Midwives. Nurses and midwives comprising 60% of the entire health workforce must be integral part of the determining part of determining the future of healthcare. And we know there is a lot of emphasis that has been given by WHO for health and healthcare workers during the recent years, and particularly last year for nurses and midwives. And it has become so vivid and clear that nurses' role is so vital, particularly during the COVID crisis situations. ICN's theme always had a main theme and a sub-theme. And we know that the main theme remained for so many years as nurses a voice to lead. Nurses a voice to lead. And last year it was nurses a voice to lead, nursing world to health. And this year it is a vision for future of healthcare. And we find that the theme and the sub theme has two major concepts. The first one is the nurses a voice to lead. And this theme, main theme continues to echo the significance of integrating nurses' voices for leadership towards healthcare provision and management. And the sub theme emphasizes the importance of integrating nurses' vision into the overall vision for the future of healthcare. And you know, why are we so specific and emphatic about these two important components, nurses' voices and nurses' vision for the future of healthcare? And is it because that nurses, there is a lack of voices, nurses' voices and leadership amongst the nurses? Or do nurses and midwives do not dream for future of healthcare? Are they involved with other stakeholders in planning and management of healthcare? These are some of the important questions that are raised in all our minds. And there are lots of exam examples that there is a lot of lacuna in these aspects, and there are a lot more to be done to strengthen in these areas. And the recent Sohn report has also clearly reiterated the importance of investment, investment in jobs, education, and leadership, particularly leadership in nursing, providing clear evidence. There is a lot of evidence cited in the Sohn report. Policy dialogue resulting in new policies involving nursing leadership can enhance their vision and transform the future of healthcare. So there's two important aspects, vision. Do we have vision, particularly about the future of healthcare, being 60% of the overall healthcare sector component? What is the nurses role? They have, nurses have vital role to play in dreaming, visioning, for the future of healthcare. A few words about the impact of COVID-19 pandemic. What happened 
It clearly showed the important role nurses play in keeping people healthy across the lifespan. And there has been disruption to education and healthcare. That was very clearly seen. And there has been significant innovations that has improved access to education and healthcare. So we saw innovations and improved access, both to education and healthcare. And ICN has reported recently 73% of national nursing associations reported that there is a disruption to nursing education. And innovations that happen, particularly in terms of online learning and simulation learning, which has never taken place, which is occurring today during this COVID crisis situations. The, nearly 60 countries have reported that there are innovations. And nurses have potential and their contribution of great impact on healthcare, and they are more visible. And the future of global healthcare, particularly in India, is, is and will be greatly influenced by this pandemic. And this pandemic has exposed several challenges and thrown up understanding of opportunities for progress. Innovations changes must invite new models of care where nurses are at the center of healthcare. The importance of using technology and innovations and making investments on data, technology, innovations and healthcare workers are highlighted. And nurses have great potential to impact healthcare of all age groups in all settings to achieve universal health coverage and SDGs. And many recent initiatives by Ministry of Health, along, uh, along with INC towards strengthening nursing and midwifery service and education, envision the input and impact of nursing workforce that can contribute significantly in achieving India's set health indicators, targets, and goals. Nurses' vision, participation, and leadership must play an integral part in shaping the future of healthcare. While ending this unfolding, I wish to thank and salute all our nurses once again, particularly COVID warriors, who are courageously caring for our patients in spite of losing their lives. And I would like to wish all of them once again, happy International Nurses Day. Thank you for your patient listening. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for sharing uh, the um, themes with us in detail. Uh, and I also want to tell that WHO has acknowledged that the hard work and selfless service provided by India's health workers, including nurses and midwives, have no doubt contributed to the country's impressive recovery rate of 31.15%. This is the data for the 2020. Now, uh, the next uh, video message will be from Dr. Leslie Mancozo, who is the president and CEO of the JAPAIGO, an international non-profit health organization affiliated with John Hopkins John Hopkins University, Dr. Manikusa, a nurse and an American Academy of Nursing Fellow, is a recognized international business leader. Dr. Manikusa has over 25 years of experience in developing public and private partnerships with organizations such as Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Cheveron, Exxon Mobil, G Foundation, etc. Dr. Mancuzua oversees Japaigo's long-standing and extensive relationships with international agencies, foreign governments, and ministries of health, nursing midwifery, and medical schools, professional associations, and non-governmental organizations. She serves on many boards, a passionate advocate for the nursing profession. Dr. Mancuzua has also been the recipient of many prestigious business and professional awards. I'm going to webcast a video message.
and CEO of Jupaigo, and a very proud nurse. I want to take a moment and thank Dalip Kumar and the Indian Nursing Council for the opportunity to speak to you for a few minutes. It is my pleasure to join you in the celebration for International Nurse. Can you see the video message? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Day at a time in India that is truly difficult for our Indian nursing colleagues. As some of you know, I always say I'm a nurse first and foremost. And so the holiday of International Nursing Day is very close to my heart. But while we celebrate International Nursing Day today, there is a difference. It is certainly emotional, but there is hope and there is also worry. For as dire as this pandemic is, can you imagine a world without nurses? Like all of you, I have watched with extreme gratitude the determination, the dedication, the skills and the resiliency of nurses working on the front lines like all of you. I have seen all of you through the years confront Ebola, Zika, MERS, SARS, it is nurses who are on the cornerstone of this global pandemic, COVID-19. Now, as India is being hit harder than ever by this virus, the heroic dedication of India's nurses inspires all of us, including me. But when this crisis is over, and as we rebuild, we must thank nurses all of you listening here today with more than words. We must show you our gratitude by protecting you, investing in you, and allowing you to work at your full capacity. Because before, during, and after emergencies, nurses are key to our shared goals for universal health coverage. You are key to helping us expand primary health care to all those that need it. Truly, none of our global health goals to eradicate poverty, to empower women and girls, to reduce stubborn inequalities that exist within countries or between countries, none can be met without addressing the critical nursing shortage. As we all know, in a country like India, where there are roughly 17 nurses per every 10,000 people. We see your impact and we also see your absence. We know that you need 2.4 million more nurses in order to meet, reach the country's goals of one nurse per 500 patients. Here's the good news though. We already know how to build a global nursing work Last year, the first State of the World's Nursing Report was launched. It gives us our marching orders. It outlines the much needed investments that need to happen in order for us to help nurses as individuals in the creation of jobs and in nursing leadership if countries are going to reach universal health care and protect the nurses they so value. The development of the report alone speaks so clearly. If we measure what we value, then having the first State of the World's Nursing Report on the future of nursing says volumes about the role nurses must play in the global conversation. We are 28 million strong and provide 80% of health services. Who better to speak about what is happening on the front lines of global health. Who better to speak about what is needed? The truth is nurses can lead and are leading in many countries, including India. Here in India, Chupaigo nurses are working with the Indian Nursing Council, as well as nursing leaders throughout the country, helping them transform primary health care for all ensuring that women have access to voluntary family planning services and access to breast cancer screening. And now, throughout this current humanitarian crisis, you, each of you, are also working to ensure that your patients 
have access to life-saving health care services despite the challenges of COVID. We must build on these examples to expand our opportunities for all nurses who seek a larger role and a voice in decision-making. In the next 10 years, nurses should be positioned as leaders, not only within the healthcare teams and the nursing profession, but beyond in the larger system. We must have nurses running ministries and leading educational institutions, nurses involved in all aspects of research, and yes, nurses involved in politics. Together, nurses have the power and the influence to tackle big challenges. Universal health coverage, non-communicable diseases, HIV, cancer, heart disease, and the list goes on. Acting both as individuals and as members of the professional team, you are the backbone of the healthcare system around the world, including in India. As we develop strategies to best train and position nurses within the future global health workforce, your voices, each of your voices must be included in the conversation. And we must not wait for the next health crisis to respond to your needs, to make the necessary investments in your education, to truly understand what attracts you to nurses and what retains you, to remove the obstacles to your empowerment. This year, International Nursing Day theme makes your critical role in the health workforce so clear. Nurses, a voice to lead, a vision for future healthcare. Now more than ever, we must be creative envisioning what you can and should be doing to address today's most pressing health challenges. As I close, I want to say a special thank you to all of the nurses here today. I know for many of you, it's not just a job. It's a call. It's who you are. It's who I am. Thank you for your tireless work throughout this crisis. The world sees you. The world appreciates you and is in awe of your determination. The time is now to ensure you get the recognition and the power in policy that you deserve. Thank you. Uh, that was a very encouraging and motivational uh, message uh, for our nursing fraternity. I think especially during the COVID times, we have worked hard, but we need to raise a voice. Yes, we have been recognized during this COVID-19, especially in the hospitals where our nurses are the backbone of the healthcare. So now I request um, Dr. Sarkar, uh, Subha Sarkarji, who is a doctor and Indian politician. He was elected to the Lok Sabha of the Parliament of India from Bankura, West Bengal in the 2019 Indian general election as a member of the Bharatiya Janta Party. Sir is currently is also executive member of the Indian Nursing Council. Yeah. Sir, I request you to address our nursing professionals today. Yes, am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes. On the occasion of celebration of International Nurses Day by Indian Nursing Council, I have got the opportunity to say something in front of this August audience and so many talented panelists. I First of all, I congratulate all of them. The Sega of Nursing started with the lady with the lamp, Florence Nightingale. She was founder of modern nursing. Her substantial contribution to health statistics are less well known. She first gained by leading a team of 38 nurses to staff an overseas hospital of the British Army during the Shevan War. Nightingale and her team arrived in Turkey in November 1854. They found hospital conditions were far worse than reported. The wards were vastly overcrowded. Patients were covered with rags, soiled with blood, 
and excrement. The water supply was contaminated and the food inedible. Sewage discharged onto floors and words, floors of the words and dead animals rotted in courtyards. According to the Nightingale, the hospital case fatality rate during the first months of her arrival was 32%. Although at that time, the concept of bacterial infection was not so much established. But Florence Nightingale, she, she deplored crowding and unsanitary conditions. She put her nurses to work, sanitizing the wards and birthing and clothing patients. Nightingale addressed the more basic problems of providing decent food and water ventilation of the wards. She kept careful statistics. Within the six months, the hospital case fatality had dropped to 2%. Now, if we consider the role of nurses in modern healthcare, nurses have long enjoyed the support of the general public and professional respect within the medical community. But if we remember the scenario of 70 years ago, we will often view that the they were as little more than order takers for doctors responsible for delivering food and medications, changing beds and bathing patients. But nurses today have much greater responsibility and autonomy and enjoy an increasingly collaborative relationship with physician and other members of the healthcare team for good reasons too. It is no secret that patients trust nurses more than they trust doctors, making them a vital link between doctor and the patient. To understand why nurses are so important in healthcare today, we need to look at what they do from the relationship they foster with the patients to the ways in which they work with other practitioners. Nurses spent more time with patients. The time nurses spent with patients in the hospital is even greater. In a recent study of the time, intensive care patients spend around 86% of the time and uh, with the nurses, compared with the doctors as only 30% with the physicians. Hmm. Nurses on the front line against the COVID-19 pandemic. An interrogative review highlights the issues that affect nurses on the front lines who fight and respond to COVID-19. The integrative review focused on papers published in 2020 after the advent of COVID-19 and involves all studies published across the world. Yes, even World Health Organization made last year, 2020, as the year of nurses and midwife in honor of the 200th birth anniversary of the Florence Nightingale. The executive board on 13th January 2019, Geneva, says it is proud to be a nurse. This is this world understand in such a way regarding the, our nurses. Yes, nurses are the voice to lead. Representing the single largest group of healthcare professionals working in the heart of the community, nurses have the potential to be influential agents of change and innovation, not only for the health of a society, but also for the numerous other dimensions of life that are affected by it. More and more, nurses are taking charge of implementing game-changing ideas and methods to improve access to healthcare. For example, in the Netherlands, a group of nurses have designed and set up a system of neighborhood home visit services to bring tailored and humanized nursing care directly to hidden patients having 
living in their own homes and with the untreated severe chronic patients the barge the bargerg model enable nurses to gain personal and contextualized insight on the needs of their patients ensuring the receive the care they need increasing the quality of nursing work and reducing cost substantially in brisbane australia the nurse led inclusive health miac projects being tailored healthcare services to individuals and family experiencing homelessness poverty social exclusion mental illness disability and domestic violence this has resulted in improved health and quality of life reduction in hospital visits and a significant reduction in hospital costs this has resulted in improved health and quality of life reduction in hospital visits and a significant reduction in hospital costs there are many other ways that nurses are taking the lead today nurses are reclaiming their contribution to science health and overall well being of the nation they are leading the way to better health systems by being involved they are professionally assertive thank you all all the panelists and all the august gathering i once again congratulate to all of you thank you thank you sir so much i mean encouraging our nurses and you know comparing the past and the present nurses uh, how they are uh, they have carved their uh, recognition in the society compared to the last 70 years and yes also like florence nightingale was it they were they, they got recognition as a nurse i think in the covid war now today it's a covid war for our nurses and they have got their recognition thank you very very much sir now uh, we have doctor next we have dr vikas mahatme who is a padma shri awarded indian ophthalmologist social entrepreneur visionary and a member of the parliament in rajya sabha he comes from nagpur in the state from the state of maharashtra he is well known across maharashtra for his charitable and social works mahatme ji was a bhartiya janata party's candidate for the Ra rajya sabha i'm showing you i'm showing i want bola show which he won unopposed Sir is currently an executive member of the Indian Nursing Council. Sir, the, Dr. Vikas Mahatma, sir, MP, sir, Honorable MP, sir, I request you to address our nurses today. Sir, we are not able to hear you, sir. Sir, we are not able to hear you. Mahatma, sir. Ah, yeah, yeah. Can yes. you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All the dignitaries who have joined this uh, webinar and uh, our uh, esteemed uh, member of Parliament, Dr. Sirkar, uh, President Dr. Dilip Kumar ji, and all the uh, dignitaries, those who will be addressing and those who have already addressed, I have come here just to say, Dhanyawad. that was the that is the only word or thank you because throughout this nearly one and half year all the nurses have worked very hard and in the covid you know there was a really uh, there was a threat of getting affected also but still you worked very hard and secondly i always feel that i am a doctor but still i feel we are in touch with the patient for few minutes but the nurses are always in touch with the patients and they touch the heart of the patient also i hope you all are vaccinated and if not you can contact anybody of us and we will able to provide the vaccination to each and every nurse who sever is working the nurses have worked throughout not only this period but always with courtesy with care and with compassion and this has to be continued because 
what is important is detreating the disease is important but what is happening is more important is that with that disease the stress of the disease what will happen to me uncertainty and that all uncertainty is treated very well or taken care by the courtesy the care and the compassion with which the nurses approach the patient that is also very important because it takes off all the psychological load as well as what will happen uncertainty what is there and this is with the without this compromising with the quality of the services you have worked very hard so i shall again say thank you to you all i am i shall be very short in my speech i want to tell you that you may be having many challenges please let me know the challenges because there are, can be challenges as as far as uh, the health insurance is covered coverage or as far as the conditions in which you have to work or any other thing which you feel please let me know and please let me uh, this uh, the indian nursing council should also be made aware that we will take every step so that the working environment is good and uh, good for every nurse whoever is working for the patients there is a bill for national uh, this medical commission like uh, there is a bill for nursing care also and your inputs are very important for that and we will take up whatever are the issues which you people are facing the nurses are facing we will take up uh, to improvise that bill so that every aspect is covered in this what we have just noticed is very important that there is a dire need of nursing nurses the number of nurses which we have today is very less as compared to what we want and this is the i think one of the, our job is to to have more nurses without compromising the quality of the nursing care without compromising the education so how to do that we will have to think and your inputs will be very valuable in that but one thing is very clear the number of nurses what we have today is very less and that has to be increased as we have done already as far as doctors are concerned we have increased the number of doctors to a great extent uh, nearly double uh, or in one or one or two years so similarly what we can do without compromising the quality of the education that has to be seen and that will be our outlook throughout this period because we have uh, recently understood that i shall again say that okay this is uh, the uh, what your seminar is on uh, voice to lead of course uh, your voice will be heard everywhere and uh, we will make it more louder through inc as well as whatever the points you uh, which will be raised as far as the vision of the healthcare because more than 60% of the healthcare is provided by the nurses so your inputs are very very valuable and that for that vision for the future healthcare we will take this inputs uh, i Uh, actually feel that uh, i should be here but i shall be leaving in a short time afterwards so whatever the inputs are there and uh, we will take up and i wish a great success for this seminar and again i shall say happy nurses day thank you thank you very much thank you so much sir and take a lead to uh, put the nurses voice uh, in the parliament and to hear them i think our nurses will surely take this opportunity and will will come to you thank you thank you very much sir and uh,
And the next video message is from Mr. Howard Carton, uh, who is the Director, Nursing and Health Policy International Council of Nurses. He has worked in the United Kingdom and the United States and has studied social policy and industrial relations. He held various posts at the Royal College of Nursing UK, including national policy, advisor for workforce research and health policy, and spent a year working for the New Zealand Nurses Organization. He was RCN head of policy and international affairs for two, from 2005 to 2015, working with a wide range of stakeholders on the development and implementation of nursing and health policy in the UK and overseas. He was named one of the Health Service Journal Top 100 Clinical Leaders 2015. He joined ICN in 2016. Now I webcast his uh, video message. Hello, my name is Howard Catton. I'm a nurse and the Chief Executive Officer of the International Council of Nurses. And on behalf of ICN and nurses around the world, I wanted to say to you, the nurses of India, we thank you for the phenomenal work that you are doing to care for people right across your country in the midst of this dreadful global pandemic. You are leading your health systems, you are leading the care for people in your country and showing incredible courage and compassion as well. In some of our darkest hours, it is you who is bringing hope and humanity to the people of India. But we know it's taking a toll on you. You're physically and some of you mentally exhausted as well because of the pressures and the strains that you are going through. It doesn't sound very much, but I want you to know that in spirit and in our hearts, we are standing with you and nurses around the world are in solidarity with you at this time. And that's why we are calling on leaders of health systems everywhere to do all that they possibly can to support and protect and invest in nurses. We're working with the Indian Nursing Council to try and bring more support for you, but it's not just for the pandemic, it's for the future. Investment in nursing leadership, nursing education, and nursing jobs is at the heart of strong health systems and the security and the safety of countries and globally as well. Thank you again for everything that you are doing. Please take care of yourself, take care and look after each other and know that you are not alone, but you are very much at the heart of the thoughts and the prayers of the international nursing family. That was a beautiful message uh, from Dr. Howard Garten. That is invest in education, retention of nurses, which is the main takeaway from this May's message. I appeal to the management of nursing education in hospitals to please emphasize on quality nursing education. As Dr. Vikas Mathis said, not only nursing education, it should be quality nursing education. I mean, quality word has to be emphasized here. And by retaining the experienced teachers and the hospital to pay a decent salary to our nurses as per the ministry's order, which is placed on the INC website. Yes, you are the voice to lead. Please take that uh, cup, copy of the ministry's letter from the website, download it, and please share with your with all of your uh, in the hospital managements, including the government as well as the private. Now, I request uh, the President India Nursing Council to launch um, the maternal health platform. Thanks. Greetings from the Indian Nursing Council. I launch maternal health platform.
thank you sir for e uh, launch of our platform and i request now dr anna freslen who is the ceo of maternity foundation since 2013 She has more than 15 years of business experience within strategy, marketing, and general management. During her leadership, Maternity Foundation has established itself as a well-respected player on the global maternal health scene. Among her responsibilities, Anna has led the scale-up of Maternity Foundation's mobile health solutions, including the Safe Delivery app, which is now used in more than 40 countries. I think in our country also, around one lakh nurses have used the Safe app delivery, and in Indian Nursing Council has awarded 15 CNERs for the same. So, over to uh, Dr. Anna to please uh, welcome, uh, address our participants. Thank you so much, and good morning, and happy International Nurses Day. As nurses, you save and improve lives every day, <clears throat> but you have never been in a more pressing situation than right now. You are and have been for months. at the front and working tirelessly to fight the pandemic we are all facing and you need all the support you can get in order to be able to still provide quality care not just for covid-19 patients but for everyone during the pandemic including mothers and newborns and we cannot afford to lose the momentum we have gained over the years in terms of the health and the survival of mothers and newborns with this year's theme of international nurse day nurses a voice to lead a vision for future healthcare we need to think ahead even though it's hard and innovation and digital learning will play an important role in transforming and shaping the future of healthcare and as already mentioned we can all recognize that digitalization has certainly been accelerated in every aspect of our life the past year let's build on that while we try to look ahead at maternity foundation we've had the honor to work with government of india india and many other strong partners to roll out and integrate our digital learning and training tool the safe delivery app across many states in india and with results of having reached more than 100,000 nurses and ANMs who have used the app not least thanks to our many strong partners and today we are ready to embark on our next and exciting chapter together with INC to introduce a comprehensive e-learning platform for nurses focusing on maternal and newborn care and hope to make it available to nurses all over India and we find so much pride in being able to work with such a strong partner as INC to systematically help improve the training of and support to nurses all over India and what a perfect timing to be able to launch it today on international day of the nurses i want to end this by saying how grateful we are to indian nursing council and government of india for this opportunity to work together to bring quality digital learning and training to india's nurses nursing students and in service staff within mnh we also want to extend our thanks to our technology partner astarika for working together with us on this important effort and lastly i would like to extend my thanks to all our partners and professional associations foxi sony tnai unicef usaid ipe global msd for mothers bill and melinda gates foundation UNFPA, Jipaiko and many more. And we encourage you to work with us on supporting and scaling up this very special initiative with INC. So we are happy and honored to be here and it's with great pleasure and then I'll give my give the word to my colleague Dr. Sarun, Country Director of India Maternity Foundation to share a concrete demo of the platform. Happy International Nurses Day. Thank you Dr. Anna. I just want to inform you today in the state of Orissa they have uh, launched the safe app delivery in the orian language so i think we will go on with all the states where anm can also have access to this safe delivery app thank you anna and over to dr uh, tarun singh soda who is a public 
health professional with over 10 years of public health experience currently he is working as a country director in an international in the maternity foundation he is also working with skill birth attendants and midwives to one of their digital solution that is save delivery app over to you, dr tarun thank you so much bharti ma'am uh, thank you so much president sir indian nursing council leadership for launching this uh, platform which will help uh, nursing cadre in service and pre service uh, in getting the updated knowledge on the uh, critical uh, labor room and newborn care uh, uh, protocols so i'll just starting uh, quickly starting with the orientation so i have divided my orientation into the three parts uh, first we are we are going to learn about the registration process uh secondly about introduction to the home page and the content and third one will be the content structure how you are going to see the uh, modules what will be the structure so i'll just start my self recorded video uh, where you can see how to uh, register on uh, this particular platform so right now the uh, platform is not available live so it will be soon by this week or by next week it will be available on inc website where through which you can access this these uh, modules so once you click on uh, uh, the uh, the link on the inc website you will be redirected to this landing page where you can see uh, this will be the landing page here you can see the courses right now we have normal labor and birth and amtsl course and following to this we will be having new courses in the coming weeks and coming months so once you click on the course uh, you need to click on the login once you log in start login here you can see uh, this is a login page uh, where the new users need to register themselves so once you click on the register it will yes so yes once you click on the register uh, register new register page uh, it will take you to the sign up page here you can use your mobile number or email both through the mobile number also you can register and through the email you can also register i have taken example of the email i am just writing a test uh, email here uh, you need to write here then you need to fill up this uh, sheet with the first name last name uh, the password you want uh, the minimum no uh, restrictions on you know using upper case and numbers you just uh, need to contain minimum of the six character so once you click on the register page now you are ready to use the platform uh, and access the module so you will write here your email or mobile number uh, whatever you have used for registration just write the password and click on the login so these are some of terms of the uses for the platform you just need to accept it and you will directly move to the this page so this is an important page where you need to do the registration where you need to write your first name middle name surname these are very important because uh, once you get the certificate these details will come on your certificate so please uh, fill these detail carefully so you need to fill the details regarding your name date of birth then the re the registered registered nursing number uh, and and mobile number so these are the mandatory fields which you need to fill to register yourself and once you have registered just save yeah this is one of the important national unique identity number if you have you can write it here along with your registered nurses number and once it is over just click on the save details so once you have clicked on the save detail once you have clicked on the save detail you will be at this at this page uh, where this normal labor and birth and amt sl uh, uh, module will come here you can see there are various uh, tabs here uh, in the overview you can see overview of the uh, module summary description uh, is there in the content you can see the content which is available so here we have uh, tried to give you uh, options uh, you know in terms of learning the learning is not the routine learning where you have the powerpoint presentation and a voice over and some documents we have work uh, we have added animated videos uh, from uh, safe delivery app we have created video lectures where you can 
uh, not only hear the voice and see the ppt but also you can see the things going on in an animated form so this is the structure uh, right now available so every every sub you know every chapter is divided into the sub chapter chapter where you can see there is a overview of each and every sub chapter there is small videos there is video lectures there are there are uh, practical procedures uh, there are you know knowledge assessment part so this is the overall structure of uh, of the module so once you click on the uh, you know view start button it will start so this is uh, overview will look like you know uh, what what are the content of this particular module uh, knowledge assessment uh, objectives then small small videos on the respective areas are there so these type of videos where you can see what is happening this is the video lecture where uh, uh, along with the powerpoint presentation you will be able to see the animation you know uh, anatomy physiology and the delivery care process you can see and learn from this these are the practical procedures in each and every subchapter you will find this the critical practical procedures are available in pdf form which can be downloaded so apart from the video lecture and animations we have added few pdfs where you can study in detail of the critical procedures uh, along with some images and to the point information to the uh, pre service education like students and the in service uh, nursing so in each and every sub chapter we have uh, quizzes knowledge assessment part which is a time bound so for for this particular chapter it is in 30 minute you have to answer around 14 questions and you can you know assess your knowledge based on you know whatever you have gained through the knowledge uh, through the lecture so once you have finished all the module you will directly go to the post session case exam where we have created few cases which is a gist of you know summary of all the learnings you have you know uh, gather through uh, entire video lectures and the content which is available on this platform are uh, through these cases uh, through these case exam you 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 will able to get uh, the certificate and the cne points so this is a case study based exam and again it is a time bound you have around 30 minute to complete this and once you will complete this uh, with more than 70% you will get the certificate so this is how the table of content looks like each and every module which is going to come will have the standardized uh, form format so it each and every module will be divided into the sub chapter having the drug list final assessment and post session case exam which will help you in getting the certificate so like i have shared uh, it will be like i have uh, taken one introduction chapter so it is divided into the overview where you will find entire overview what you are going to get and learn in this particular chapter this is a uh, introduction part where you will able to see A Where normal bird able to see the animated video i'll just play it is spontaneous in onset with no a normal bird is and uh, it is also you know a video lecture each in each and every sub chapter you will have the video lectures where uh, detailed uh, information will be provided on the themes so right now like normal labor so entire uh, you know detailed uh, uh, detailed content will be there in this powerpoint presentation with animations where you can see and learn like in the textbook we have the static images but here you can learn through the you know moving animations uh, and the animation is of high quality so it will be help you in understanding the concept uh, in detail introduction labor also known as parturition is the physiological process by which the fetus placenta and the membranes are expelled through the birth canal it begins yeah sure ma'am so uh, for the study in detail like i have earlier said we have supplemented these uh, modules with the uh, pdf formats where uh, you can find the you know content in detail like birth hormones all the content is there in form of pdf which are downloadable and like i have mentioned in each and every chapter uh, you will have the knowledge assessment which is time bound and it is you know compulsory to finish knowledge assessment to finally go to the case uh, case assessment and uh, you know uh, get the certificate and cne points 
so this is i have already uh, mentioned practical procedures drug list will be there where you will get the details of the relevant drugs indication uses doses administration contraindication and the adverse reaction uh, again it is downloadable and can be used by anyone and this is the post session case exam once you complete this you will get the certificate and the cne points thank you so much i request all the uh, nursing uh, staff uh, all the pre service uh, education teachers lecturers to use this platform in their you know uh, teaching and also to students to use uh, this platform on an active basis we will be very happy to have your uh, feedback on a uh, regular basis and to improve it further thank you so much thank you so much uh, dr tarun i think our fraternity and as well as the nursing students will find it very very useful because as i saw that it is it's almost like supplementing the textbooks to, to them so they will have additional knowledge additional through the video clippings before seeing the patients so they, they can have uh, even know how it looks how how we have to look into during the procedures also is very clearly laid down so thank you dr tarun so much now i uh, request dr uh, roy k jha the president of tni president of tni and is one of the senior most professor in psychiatric nurse, nursing in kerala with 19 years collegiate teaching experience in ug and pg he is the chief editor of kerala nursing forum first journal of nursing from kerala researcher with special interest in dementia and old age and many publication on his site both national and international journals uh, i invite dr roy k george uh, to please deliver the address to our nurses thank you bhati uh, greetings of the international day international nurses day to all the eminent panelists and uh, all our prospective colleagues who are attending this webinar from Train Nurses Association of India. In this International Nurses Day, the second consecutive International Nurses Day we celebrate during or through this pandemic of COVID-19. Last year, it was the International Year of Nurses and Midwives. That celebrations also was shadowed by the pandemic which affected the old age. But of course, this pandemic has highlighted the nurses service where there is no definitive treatment. Nursing care holds the key to management of patient and that way nursing has got the visibility and the limelight which World Health Organization also wanted to have during the declaration of International Year of Nurses and Midway. The beginning at the outset, let me salute all our nursing colleagues across the globe and in India who are braving this, who are braving their heroic battle against COVID for more than 16 months now in a row, sacrificing their personal and family life and sacrificing their personal and family time, and also facing a lot of adversities and difficulties, especially in a developing country like India. Actually, they are having the second war, maybe most famous war in the in nursing after the Crimean war or even a longer war. And also in India itself, as of, after the estimates TNA has with our records, we have lost 90 nurses who have made the supreme sacrifice of life in this heroic battle. And the numbers are increasing. Even we have stopped sharing the information because many of our nurses right now are battling for life after affecting, getting affected with COVID in ICUs and seeing so many condolence messages and RIP messages may bring them more down. So we are, we are not sharing the uh, photos of those people who have died recently because it is with a purpose, but we are keeping the records and updating. So we have lost 90 nurses. And on behalf of Train Nurse Association of and all the entire nursing fraternity and the nursing colleagues assembled here, I pay our heartfelt tributes and to their memories, which they have set a model to emulate that is sacrificing one's own life in the call of duty. And I take this opportunity to congratulate and appreciate the efforts of Indian Nursing Council led by our respected president in organizing this webinar on International Nurses Day with so many eminent speakers across the world. Already the theme of the Nurses Day have been detailed by Madam Pranidha Elderishu, 
and as a professional association when we look at the team. Of course, in the past few years, Voice of Healthcare and Voice of Nurses, that was the main agenda of the team. And this term, it is vision for the future. As all of us know, nurses constitute more than 60% of the healthcare workforce. Still, we are a marginalized profession in country like India. In developed, developed countries, the situation is different. So what we can do? We need to look, continuously lobby and fight for better investment in nursing, comfortable working environment, more autonomy, and more involvement in policy making bodies. Because being the largest healthcare workforce, our role shall not be neglected when the pandemic is over. We have many things to contribute to the society and bringing in or building in a more robust health system because we are the major health work. So we need positions or participation in policy making and decision making, which is largely lacking. Right now, most of the post in Ministry of Health and Family Welfare India, nursing division is laying vacant for many years. So there are issues like this. Due to paucity of time, we are not going into such details, but we need the support of the government, this both central and state government, the policy makers, the respected uh, you know, legislators or the parliamentarians in both upper house and lower house. We are happy that we have most of the two members in the nursing council with us. And also we need support of judiciary and media and society at large to improve working conditions of nurses, which will definitely improve the quality of nursing care given to the people of India. India remains to be a largest exporter of, or India continues to be the largest exporter of nurses to the world. But it's a sad state that, you know, though we produce large number of nurses, our nurse population ratio still remains inadequate because nurses leave for dinner pastures. We cannot blame them, but it is our responsibility to build better working conditions and the country shall be united for that. And as a professional association, we will be there to lobby for nurses, but we need support of all the people concerned. And when it's coming to leadership, vision for the future, definitely as uh, current leaders, we must remember that change is only thing permanent and the world is changing globally. There are changes occurring in nursing, medicine and health field and global economy, politics, everything there is change. And these changes has to be inculcated to our profession. And the leadership has to be for change. And the leadership also has to be for change of leadership also. We must build and nurture, inspire and instill young leaders to come up with fresher initiatives and ideas. Otherwise, we'll be failing in our duty as leaders. This is the uh, vision or this is a perspective TNA gets from the current uh, team of the International Nurses Day, vision for the future. Like there are adversities, like about 10 years back in a TNA annual conference, when we asked the students whether the Student uh, Nurses Association needed more autonomy and more office barriers from students, our students uh, you know, mentioned, no, no, we need the uh, teachers as the president. Maybe they are too tired to say so. I don't think it is, the, it is an opinion from within them because there is a lot of hierarchical uh, discipline, in our discipline in our profession, which may be hampering youth of leadership from the young states. So we have to definitely give focus on this. Let us, uh, the current leaders and seniors in the profession, give more focus to bringing up or nurturing and inspiring young leaders to come up so that the collective strength of the profession will be much more visible, audible, and solid. So I wish once again, uh, wishing everyone, or every each and every nurse assembled here and our colleagues who are actually fighting for the humanity in the battlefields of COVID, a international, happy International Nurses Day, and thanking Indian Nursing Council for giving me this opportunity to talk on this International Nurses Day. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for addressing the nurses and motivating them and encouraging and also paying tribute to our nurses. Thank you very much, sir. Now, I, uh, the next speaker uh, today is uh, Madam Chike Khurana. She, who doesn't know her? She is well known to everybody. She's a Secretary General of All India Government Nurses Federation with an umbrella organization. It is an umbrella organization and the only national level federation where a number of associations, unions and federations are affiliated with it and works for the welfare nursing professional and the profession in India as well as abroad and also represents India and Indian health sector abroad. All India Government Nursing Federation is working with an aim to make nursing as a developed profession from developing profession. She's also the recipient of National Florence Nightingale Award 2008. I think uh, this line I just want to quote to everybody because she said once that the, 
why can't we fight for our rights if others can this is a thinking which bothered her which made her to have a union first in wellington hospital nurses union and today as a all india government nursing federation so over to you madam i think this war should also bother the other nurses in our country and uh, and has to lead the voices for themselves thank you ma'am and over to you over to you ma'am <laughs> thank you bharti first of all i thank indian nursing council and especially sir dilip kumar for inviting me to this uh, session uh, moreover it is was uh, education and the work of the nurses but you all know my theme is quite different from uh, all uh, other people uh, first of all i congratulate all my nurses all over the world a happy nurses day and pay tribute to all nurses who have laid their life to the covid 19 and still they are struggling very hard uh, uh, without uh, even taking water for uh, many hours uh, putting pp ticket for long hours and day and night working now somewhere they have made them 12 hours working somewhere they are made uh, you know uh, their quarantine period is shortened because short of the staff is to uh, lead you know the nurses wise to lead nurses wise to lead in the work is okay but nurses need a wise to lead for their working conditions for their salaries for their rest period for their promotions and as somebody was taking that uh, the leaders leaders they means the senior leaders who are managing the hospitals who are in the uh, ministry but uh, i'm sorry to say and i think everybody knows those all post so actually there is nobody to lead the nurses in the uh, hospitals and in the ministry also it is in the hands of uh, babus or some senior uh, uh, administrators whatever they decide has to be uh, taken up by the nurses because there is no voice of our no voice to be heard in the ministry no voice to be heard in the i think first of all we all together i am not saying that uh, you know what is lacking in our profession is that Uh, we have struggled hard for all. I think just almost 50 years I have been struggling hard, and now Mr. Roy is saying that we should give our leadership to the younger people. Yes, we should give the leadership to the younger people. But first of all, the younger people should come and join and take experience. It is experience only you man uh, make the man perfect. It was 87 when uh, I didn't know know that what the nurses have. Uh, so much unity and everybody came after me and then we uh, heard to the, that dg that time and we we draw our strike and then uh, our unity was broken for 3 years and that was a big great experience for me also that how to lead and when to lead and uh, when things to when you make people together you have to take out safely them that, that is a past I, i think i should not waste the time the my uh, vision is that uh, nurses are for the health care and they are doing health care they have managed all the dengue the swine flu the many before the liver diseases many diseases they have managed they are used to manage but this covid is a, because it is a deadly disease it's a pandemic so uh, and uh, many healthcare uh, uh, people are also there so it is something that, uh, very serious and have to be taken very seriously first of all what is lacking in our hospitals or in the health system is that we don't have enough staff according to norms even norms made by the finance ministry even very old 92 norms accepted by the health ministry is not implemented themselves in their hospitals and the health institutes and the, the pay scale with the uh, health ministry uh, uh, has given for private nurses after the uh, tna fought the case in supreme court 
even that they themselves are not uh, giving them in their central government hospitals and other hospitals what to talk about the others so uh, my uh, request to all is that we should all get together you know sometimes the teachers are uh, thinking themselves very big sorry to say and the other people are thinking that they are so no why should we talk to them why should no there should not be any ego if you are really sincere for your profession as i am thinking the people are asking me daily are you okay are you okay because there's so much of covid and because of my 76 age everybody is asking i'm uh, uh, thank god i worried our my whole family was covid uh, positive and my husband was in hospital for 5 days but thank god now everybody is okay with your wishes and i think uh, the the people want Uh, that we should guide them and people want that we should but our aim is that we should not be divided we should be one and then uh, take for uh, you know for the uh, our pay, the pay scale should be same the allowances should be same and now the uh, uh, prime minister sir says that uh, uh, we will uh, give them priority in the service that is okay but uh, i'm uh, <coughs> thinking i was uh, i am i am making a letter that uh, whatever the promised our pay scale in 2016 by nadda ji that should be implemented i think uh, if they is, this pay scale is implemented according to our recruitment rules that should be a big boom to the nurses if really government want to uh, you know respect nurses that is one thing second thing i want to say that the government has given order that the students uh, should be uh, brought into the uh, service uh, for the covid i am not for that because students are not registered nurses students till they are not registered they can only do bed making and temperature and this and that that can be done the bed making as well can be done with the help of uh, mts and there's so many uh unemployed nurses in our india so if you call them uh, they will come for the job but uh, my request is that you should pay them as paid to the government nurses in their state i think uh, they should not somebody says they will pay 800 per day some say they will pay 1000 per day some say the, the, the sixth pay commission basic pay is paid that should not be whether whatever the seventh pay commission is paid even in the private or in the government they should be uh, paid and uh, one thing more that which um, you know it hurts me we were very happy that the, the gnm uh, schools will be converted into in the bsc nursing school and everybody is saying that we should improve education this student why should we go back when already decided that the gnm will be phased out after 2022 that i think we should uh, take up it again we have already uh, taken up and you know for we, my vision for future healthcare is healthcare is we are doing and we have been doing and we will be doing for years together till we are alive or till we are in the service but we should do something for ourselves also so that our profession if profession mean the younger generation is like my children if i do something for them they will remember and then they will do for others if we leave it i think uh, if we leave it today all files will be closed so i request every nurse of india to join together on one platform or whatever it may be but they should not uh, write against each other or work against each other and Uh, you know it is my bad experience when in 2016 uh, mr uh, george knows i told them why should i tell requested 100 times to give a support letter even that was not given that always hurts me so uh, please please this is my request that we should all uh, work together inc is for Uh, education everything education is a must quality education is a must everything is a must what you also have 
uh, your own care is the also must that is what i want to say this on uh, on nurses day and wish you all very happy nurses day and my tributes to the nurses who lost their lives for this covid thank you very much uh, thank you ma'am thank you so much uh, for your uh... Uh, you know, calling our nurses. Yes, one thing is there. We should have one nurse to lead, not many voices. So if you have many voices, we may break down. Yes, one nurse, one voice is very good to fight for our rights. But not at the COVID times. Yes, after when we get the normalcy, we will fight for ourselves. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. Now I request uh, Dr. T. Dilkumar, our President Indian Nursing Council. Who doesn't know him? Everybody knows him, right? I don't need a special uh, introduction for sir. But yes, he is President Indian Nursing Council, ex-nursing advisor for Government of India, ex-project director, GFHM program. He has a long standing 43 years of experience and in, in nursing in different capacities, starting from staff nurse uh, to an advisor to Government of India. And he's a very- One stop, stop. Very visionary man who has always led Indian Nursing Council and the nurses in all the platform. Over to you, sir. Respected dignitaries of the panel, Dr. Vikas Mahatme, Member of Parliament of Rajya Sabha, Dr. Subha Sarkar, the Member of Parliament in Lok Sabha, distinguished uh, uh, international nursing leaders, who have sent their message and who have shown the solidarity with the Indian nurses. I think uh, uh, we were able to get uh, the three leaders in the International Council for Nurses, especially the President and CEO and also the Chief of the Japago, because I want to emphasize repeatedly the Chief of a Japago is a nurse. She is uh, leading the international NGO and we nurses and midwives many a times we are not good in uh, business, we are not good in uh, entrepreneurship and she is the one lady who is able to lead the at the international level and she was able to give her message for this international nurses team. So on behalf of the Indian Nursing Council, I would like to extend Greetings to all the nurses globally and especially to the nurses in India who is working who is, uh, as a warrior in the difficult situation and selflessly knowingly that they can be infected. Even then, they have taken the courage to work with the, in this uh, pandemic situation. We are seeing how our nurses are motivated. The people who have been recovered from the, this pandemic, they are willing to come back and to work. That itself shows what the oath we have taken as nurses, the commitment, dedication, and as our member of parliament was telling, since he himself was a physician, he was telling that we are there for a few minutes and two people are going to touch the heart of the patient. So that is the level of the commitment which we are providing to the patients and also the community. We all know that how difficult, as uh, Mrs. Kurana was mentioning and uh, Rai Jarj was mentioning, how about the, uh, the difficult shortage of nurses, and also, Mrs. Purana always uh, talks about the, the nursing staffing norm with the Ministry of Finance. Ultimately, at least one thing at that time I told uh, uh, Madam, at least know you are getting something in the letter and spirit from the Government of India, Ministry of Finance. There is a somebody, Ministry of Finance has approved the nursing staffing norm that becomes a base. Yes, we got the base. Now we are, as she is telling that, we should see that how much uh, we should take forward to improve and to revise because the technology has changed and a lot of things have come in. So there is a need to review those nursing staffing norms. For that, I think uh, both the TNA and the 
uh, Mr. Purana has to work together. I think uh, uh, I would like to mention here one uh, buzzword. Our uh, International Council for Nurses, Anna Kennedy, when she was elected, uh, when in the in the uh, in the victory speech, she took the word togetherness. I think uh, that togetherness as making at the global international global platform making a much difference are able to reach out to the G20 health ministers, they are able to reach out to the, um, to the uh, WHO and uh, they were able to um, take up in the various platforms on the nurses issues. I think uh, our ex-ICN president was one of the uh, United Nations Empowerment uh, uh, Committee which was formed under the uh, Prime Minister of the France, he was one of the member. So they were able to take these all voices what uh, we are now giving to the international platform. So, uh, and again, I'm having a, uh, so many people have um, laid their lives in this fight against the um, um, COVID-19. I would like to salute them. I would like to salute um, for these, they, their uh, family members who have lost the breadwinners. It is a very sad, but still that has not made any difference. The other nursing professionals are coming forward to give the care to the patients. So once again, I would like to uh, congratulate all the nursing fraternity in India on this uh, International Nurses Day. I'm also very happy, at least uh, before I uh, go to the, uh, some of the issues which uh, where we have to go, and where some of the problems which we have, the one of the biggest problem, the uh, the Sone report came out, State of the World Nursing Report, and last week State of the World Midwifery Report. These two reports are talking important words. The words are investment in nursing education. What Mrs. Kurana and what Rai George is telling, they create shortage. Even our uh, uh, member of parliament, uh, uh, um, Dr. Vikas Mate, there is a lot of shortage of nurses. So this has been very clearly flagged in the state of the world nursing report and also the state of the world midwifery report. They are telling the state of the world nursing report, they are telling they need 13 million nurses by 2010. So that is the figure the state of the world nursing report is telling. The state of the world midwifery report is telling 9 lakh midwives are required. So, that is the, so one is numbers, not only numbers, creating the position is a very, very important buzzword for us in India. Because we may say that so many things, so many requirements and all, until unless you don't create the post, that is not going to serve the purpose. Therefore, the international uh, zone report is telling investment in nursing education and creation of the nursing position and also the leadership. I think uh, uh, the uh, Mr. Rai and uh, Mrs. Purana was mentioning about the word of the leadership. So the, the, these are the three important points which has been uh, bothering the WHO and the uh, ICM and ICM. So therefore, uh, uh, we, we have to take forward these reports and the WHO has written to the uh, all the countries and uh, uh, to implement these reports. Now it is the professional associations and the unions and federations to be together. Again, I'm repeating the word together. And uh, if we are together, then this lobbying becomes easier. And uh, we have at least you know, able uh, three member of parliaments, at least two member of parliaments, they were there today. And they are there to support. And uh, um, so that we can see that in a phased manner, how best we can see that to achieve this, uh, these things. So in this perspective, I'm very happy to announce, very, I think, only at 11, 11 o'clock, the news has been, uh, uh, the in this uh, investment, the creation of post and the upskilling, one of the big projects has been launched today at 11 o'clock. This, this is a project 
impact guru foundation in collaboration with apollo hospitals group launches covid warrior upskilling program for nurses across india this is a big project has been announced impact guru foundation which is a uh, the uh, foundation in collaboration with apollo not only that in this venture their their uh, their project objective is they would like to enroll 1 lakh nurses across india and they would like to spend 50000 per nurse within the 2 uh, to 3 years for their upskilling and various evidence based some of the programs which are fun- functioning overseas to improve the quality in the various specialization like nurse practitioner program all that initiatives they would like to reach out to the 1 lakh nurses and per one nurse they are going to spend 50000 nurses in the way of scholarship in the way of the uh, various uh, uh, initiatives so this is a very important what i am very happy to mention this is the indian nursing council is a a collaborative partner with this whole uh, initiative besides that another important uh, point which you would like to make the son report says investment at least the investment 70% of the healthcare delivery system is in the private sector for the first time the private sector has come forward to invest the money that's a very important positive sign we can see in this international nurses day of uh, uh, 2021 the private sector corporate sector has come for the investment so the at least know that the, uh, the what the son report has said i think in, in tune with the son report uh, they are able to come forward for this uh, big initiative and they have also making this uh, project a covid the project title is covid warrior upskilling program called angel i know nurses are always called in the, by name as angels so i think uh, they have taken literally this word angel and giving an interpretation what is angel and also one of the important uh, on the project uh, uh, the project title is thank you nurses the whole 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 project they are telling they want to thank the nurses in the while thanking the nurses so the private sector especially corporate sector they would like to make an investment for the nurses this angel if you go through the title of the angel stands for advanced nurses growth excellence and learning angel a n for uh, advanced nurse, uh, advanced nurses g stands for growth e stands for excellence l stands for learning so they are they are they are, they are the mindset the importance of the policy makers in this whole uh, corporate sector how they would like to thank the nurses how to invest the money and not only that besides the apollo has made a commitment for the 10000 nurses out of the 1 lakh nurses so the other groups have come forward to partner with this whole initiative like federation of indian chamber commerce wiki then uh, amity university then the uh, symbiosis international university a lot of knowledge partners and the indian nursing council is also one of the partner with this whole initiative i am very happy to announce this uh, development at least uh, uh, the uh, and also another uh, uh, the project component which at least apollo is mentioning is that whatever their earnings they would like to see within the period of 2 years 25 25% of their earning and for 10% of the nurses they would like to see the earning should go up to 100% so that type of a whole scope of uh, project activity has been laid down and uh, i would like to congratulate 
the impact guru foundation and also the apollo and our various other partners for taking efforts in this covid 19 and realizing the recognition of the uh, the nursing fraternity and coming out with a, a very path breaking initiative for the uh, the upskilling of the nurses in the name of the upskilling and also telling the angel and also telling the thank you nurses so coming to the next is i would like to give some statistics that uh, i think in terms of the numbers which uh, i was uh, all other speakers was mentioning our nurse, our uh, researchers have estimated by april 2020 they had 1.90 million hospital beds in india 1.90 million hospital beds in india they have also said 0.95 that means uh, uh, about uh, 0.95 million icu beds are there this is a statistics by april 2020 afterwards lot of icu beds have been added by the government and also the the private sector and also at that time they had 48000 ventilators so now after that the, i think uh, the government of india and also the private sector and to the international uh, support they are able to uh, have more ventilators to manage this these ventilators to manage this 1.90 million beds and to manage the 0.95 icu beds you need a nursing human resource that's what um, the mrs kurana and uh, rai was talking about the shortage of nurses we have to increase the post that's what the uh, the sun report is telling that uh, the investment and creation of the position so therefore this uh, gives a uh, the uh, very important uh, backdrop on which why we need more nurses and again not only having a attracting the nurses for the service how to retain them if you are able to give a good working condition then only you will be able to retain them that's what uh, uh, the uh, whenever the associations goes to the pay commission always they make it a point how to retain the nurses if you have to retain the nurses you have to pay the well salary that's what the tna also went to the supreme court uh, taking up the uh, nurses in the private sector and um, uh, at least uh, after that there is a, some improvement in the corporate sector but still a long way to see that that those guidelines to be implemented the coming to the, uh, the we have a large number of uh, um, uh, nurses we have we have about 22 lakh nurses have been registered from 1947 to date as on today about 9.34 lakh anms have been registered from 1947 to date and about 0.56 lakhs uh, the uh, the lady health visitors so constitute about 32.67 nursing and midwifery professionals have been have been registered but are they working these are all 1947 so therefore in order to have a live register in this perspective in this digital digital technology the indian nursing council was able to come out with a live register component and also it's called as a nursing registration tracking system and uh, the nursing registration tracking is having a lot of benefits Uh, for the internal migration outside the country migration and also the uh, the primary registration how to facilitate for uh, um, so much time our nurses are spending to get the primary registration all these things are uh, to be addressed through this nrts and uh, unfortunately due to covid uh, we were not able to complete our the uh, objectives of completing the whole nrts and even with this during a uh, nrt uh, in the covid period 1 lakh nurses have been enrolled that means we have a 1 million nurses and midwifery professionals aadhar linked with photograph with the date of birth all the information is available with us so now we have started sending the emails to all the nurses in this covid 19 some of the latest uh, um, the information and also the uh, the prime minister office have taken this portal of this uh, so that any uh, collector wants to know in that district how many nurses are medics are there with just putting the, the, the district name you will be able to make out how many nurses and midwives are there in that district so this digital technology and we are the first regulatory body to uh, roll out this uh, uh, live register and uh, unfortunately some of our own nursing professional people could not uh, support this uh, initiative 
So, but now their governments have come forward that okay, please uh, do it. We are willing to do it. I think some uh, two or three states are lagging behind. Hopefully, we'll be able to uh, since the already approval as we have received from the respective state governments, we will be able to roll out in those uh, uh, states so that our objective of achieving the NRTs will be fulfilled. Coming to the important uh, uh, aspect of the uh, the government of India as uh, the nurse practitioner midwifery program. See, again, investment. Again, I am repeatedly telling investment. The investment um, has to be done by the, by the way the so, uh, corporate sector is made. Government also has to make the investment. For the first time in my experience, I am seeing such a huge investment, a commitment, a policy statement has been made by the government of India that they are going to train 84,000 nurse practitioner midwives. 84,000. They have made a commitment. Commitment in the sense under the National Health Mission. Government of India has made a commitment. They have also said training the nurse practitioner midwives, which is an 18 months course, and also the training, the having the establishing the at the state nodal centers and the national nodal centers, all the expenditure of these establishments is coming under the National Health Mission. Training, after the training, placement. They have also identified midwifery-led units, MLU. The midwifery-led unit will have a four to six nurse practitioner midwives. So the, the Lancet, I think nowadays you might be hearing in the TVs more of a Lancet in COVID, but the Lancet in midwifery has given a policy uh, prescription that if you train a, um, a midwife on the, on the uh, well qualified under the ICM competencies, she will be able to take the 83% of the maternal and neonatal deaths. So because of the, uh, the Lancet uh, prescription, government of India has uh, rolled out the midwifery guidelines and also they have made this commitment we are going to train them and also now the Ministry of Health, uh, NHM, National Health Mission is working on what should be the architecture for the midwifery led unit, what should be the supplies and equipments, what are the drugs she can uh, provide, all these things, the scope of midwifery practice with the Indian Nursing Council has already shared with the Ministry of Health and Family. Shortly, they are going to finalize the scope of uh, uh, the midwifery practice. So this is a big takeaway by the, I can say that, uh, um, because sometimes we talk, make policy statements, but here a commitment has been made in terms of the policy they are going to invest. So this investment again is in the tune of the own report. So therefore, I would like to congratulate the Ministry of Health, National Health Mission for taking this initiative with an objective of that to achieve the SDG goals by 2030. So that's a big uh, uh, change. Similarly, uh, the Government of India and the Indian Nursing Council, and we are able to uh, launch the Nurse Practitioner Critical Care Program and during this COVID-19, I have got a report from the various, these out of the 53 institutions, which they started the nurse practice and critical care program. They have given a very good positive, all the medical fraternity were as a team. They have said these nurse practitioner critical care, they need in this critical uh, period. They have done a good job. And uh, we, uh, at least some of the, um, uh, the, uh, the deans in the medical colleges, they have expressed how important these nurse practitioner critical care in the ICUs. So therefore now, we are also now, we are not stopping. We want to promote clinical practice. We want to standardize, not only standardize, we want to competency-based clinical practice. In abroad, ICUs are headed by the a doctor of nursing practice. It's called DNP. Like for the uh, academicians in nursing, we have a PhD, but similarly for the clinical, we have a DNP. So that DNP program is going to be launched on a pilot basis in two institutions in, in India shortly, so that we would like to take forward to promote more of a clinical competencies. So that they, the, our, our, they, our nurses, young nurses, they should have a career path instead of going to the academics, they should also go to, towards the clinical practice. And especially for the... And to this, uh, another important development which has taken place in the global level is to achieve this own report, to achieve this uh, uh, state of the medical report, the WHO, they have formulated the strategic directions at the global level. And those strategic directions are going to be approved 
in the coming World Health Assembly. Afterwards, they are going to send through the WHO to all the countries to implement those reports. So those uh, four strategic directions are again, which is relevant to India, which is uh, very important for uh, the things which we are today, uh, what Mrs. Uh, Purana and uh, Rai was talking about. Those is educating enough nurses. That is the one strategy. The details are there, but one of the strategic direction is educating enough nurses. Number two, again, we are always uh, nursing professionals. We are telling that nursing staffing norm is not being implemented. They are telling, create the jobs. They are telling the governments, educate enough nurses, create jobs. Maximizing the, the third strategic direction is maximizing the contribution of the nurses and midwives in clinical practice. The type of a training they have undergone, so they have to be uh, ensured that their clinical knowledge which they have acquired, clinical knowledge which they have acquired during the period of training should be ensured in their practice. For that, one of the bottlenecks what we have in India is we don't have a scope of nursing and medieval practice. That scope of nursing and medieval practice, what our uh, honorable member of parliament was telling that uh, uh, the Vikas Mahatma, that the new nursing and medieval commission bill which is going to be laid down in the parliament. And in that, Indian Nursing Council took up this with the Ministry of Health. The scope of nursing and medieval practice is very important. That With that, we are, uh, we are facing a lot of legal issues and also the uh, nurse practitioners and various specialty people will be getting the legal empowerment. So therefore, this, the scope of nursing and medical practice has been incorporated in the, in the new uh, the NMC uh, National Nursing and Medical Commission. So that will address um, many of the issues. So that, that will facilitate for maximizing the contribution of the nurses and uh, midwives in the clinical practice. That is the third strategic direction. The fourth um, the, uh, strategic direction is strengthening the nursing and midwifery leadership. I think as the uh, state of the, uh, uh, the SON report has said, as I said, the theme, investment, creation, leadership. So here also in the strategic direction also, they have made one strategic direction is the leadership. As Mrs. Kurana and uh, Rai was mentioning that there are no leaders in our own ministry and then all the positions are lying vacant. I think that is a, a cause of concern. That is a cause of concern. But what Indian Nursing Council has taken forward is that Nightingale challenge, which the Lord Nigel Chris who came to India and um, uh, uh, at that time, one of the uh, theme of that uh, Nightingale challenge is educate the younger leaders. That means below 35 years of age people, if she is working as a ward sister, if she is working as assistant nursing superintendent, if she is working as a nursing superintendent below, they should be given a leadership skills. So in that perspective, we are Indian Nursing Council has already finalized it, by this time, it should have been started below the 30 where the master trainers, 30 people are going to be trained. LFC, the leadership for change. This is a program, a brand program of the, uh, the International Council for Nurses. We are bringing that LFC program to India, wherein we are going to train the master, 30 master trainers. After the um, master trainers, they will further train uh, the, the younger age group people to acquire their assertiveness, clinical competencies. All those things are going to be taught this due, due to COVID-19. We have delayed this process and we have postponed the uh, launching of that LSC program that's going to be there. But nevertheless, what uh, the Mrs. Turana and uh, Rai uh, George was telling about, filling up those positions at the national level is a critical for the leadership that needs to be addressed. And I think uh, we'll be sharing this. Uh, 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 we discussed uh, many times with our member of parliament I think uh, we'll be again further discussing them to take forward these issues, how best they can fill up these uh, five positions at the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Mm -hmm. And also another important uh, gap between the education and the practice is there. There's always, uh, they, uh, we have a complaint from the medical fraternity that your educators are good in theory, but uh, they are uh, short in practical. To improve this position, we have launched a, a, the um, program uh, uh, we have um, put up in our INC website the concept note of uh, uh, the how to bridge the education practice on the lines of the um, the uh, Vellore model. And many of the institutions have started uh, implementing that. I think uh, these uh, professional associations and the unions has to support this concept so that 
that as long as our clinical competencies are not going to improve, the, uh, the medical fraternity bureaucracy is not going to recognize us. So therefore, uh, the, this uh, bridging of the gap between the education and service is a very critical. So therefore, we have to see that at least uh, I could see one example of the St. John Medical College and Bangalore. They, they were not having this concept. After our uh, initiation, they were able to successfully to implement this whole uh, initiative. And many of the All India Institute of Medical Science, which are coming up, they have also started in a uh, in a small way, but it requires a lot of commitment on the part of the educators and on the part of the administrators, nursing administrators, to take forward uh, to see that the our quality of the nursing care is provided in the rural area, and uh, uh, so that um, uh, the the impact. What I think uh, this Guru Foundation has said. The ultimately they are seeing an impact after upskilling of the nurses. How best their uh, the their clinical competencies will be increased in the in the clinical setting. So that is the impact. So to see the impact of the quality of the nursing care, we have to have the uh, these uh, one is quality. The other is uh, bridging the gap of the education practice. Present sir. Yeah. So there, yes, I am I am I am closing the uh, my talk. So. Uh, on, the, on this International Nurses Day, once again, I would like to uh, greet the all the nursing fraternity. And uh, the we have a very big uh, buzzword of the investment, creation, leadership. It is for us, the, uh, the professional associations and the, uh, the federations has to take forward. And the buzzword of the togetherness, what our ICN president uh, has uh, laid down, that togetherness, and these three buzzwords, these four should be the buzzword for the professional association and to the unions to achieve the, uh, the stated objectives. Once again, I would like to um, thank the, all the people who have joined uh, for the International Nurses Day, though many of our nurses are working in a, uh, in, a, in a clinical setting, they don't get time to even listen to that. Therefore, uh, we, are having, we are going to have a uh, YouTube and we request all the people to share this YouTube uh, with the, our nursing fraternity so that they are motivated uh, with the new initiatives which are going to come up. Once again, wish you best of luck. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir, for so much information provided to our nurses and where and all they have to look for uh, the issues and how they have to fight for their objectives. Uh, thank you very much, sir. And I request Dr. Arya Sharma, the ex-principal RIK College of Nursing and a vice president of Indian Nursing Council, who is a guiding force for all in the Indian Nursing Council. Uh, Madam Dr. Arya Sharma, I invite you to close the session. Thank you, Bharti. Uh, I think at the very outset, I also would like to first uh, wish all the nurses at the globe as well as in India a very happy International Nurses Day. Uh, I think this session was for one hour, but we have almost exhausted two hours. So, uh, but I'll still like to uh, give the uh, closing remarks for the panelists and for the dignitaries who have sent their messages. You see, the um, this year's uh, theme for the International Nurses Day is. Nurses, a voice to lead, a vision for future healthcare. So the webinar on this theme was started at about 11 o'clock. And this was um, in this first Lieutenant Colonel, Dr. Sarabjit Kaur, Secretary Indian Nursing Council, welcomed all the dignitaries and the panelists and the participants by giving small, um, I think, uh, you know, her remarks on what's happening during the covid pandemic and how nurses have been uh, contributing and giving their services uh, despite risking their life, losing lives, and such a big loss for some of the families. Um, yet, uh, you can see that they are in the front line. And I think I realized much more. When last year it started, I was not here, and I did not see the situation. But this year, now when it has come, the second wave, I have had my own people in the hospital so I can see how much, how significantly they are making their, you know, place in the uh, healthcare system. 
and people appreciate so much not only doctors but nurses more because they are there all throughout uh, then we had message from dr anit kennedy the president indian uh, sorry um, international council of nurses who also wished all the nurses the happy international nurses day and then especially for indian nurses now that the uh, the covid situation which is the crisis is there and how well they are working and um, uh, coping uh, with the uh, covid uh, services she they wanted to support indian uh, nurses particularly in terms of vaccination of nurses or any other way that we express and uh, this they would like to do from their uh, indian international uh, council of nurses disaster fund uh, i think that that was a very great uh, gesture and we will see what, whether we take it uh, or what is our opinion on this and she also mentioned that no one is safe unless all of us are safe no country is safe unless all countries are safe so the spread will be there unless until the really this covid pandemic um, you know ends and she wish that it ends soon because there is so much of physical and emotional trauma for the nurses and all the other healthcare workers uh, in the field and so thank the thank madam for her solidarity shown for the indian nurses and overall for nurses in the globe then dr punita senior consultant at the inc unfolded the international nurses day theme and she gave briefly the the main theme and the sub theme of the uh, inc uh, this thing um, uh, icn and the main thing is that you need to integrate nurses voice for leadership towards provision of healthcare management and management for nursing education as well as for the services and in which she talked about the son report and uh, the importance of the son son report in which they mentioned primarily of innovations uh, in terms of online and simulation learning and other technological innovations to strengthen and upskill the nurses to fight against covid uh, situation then we had uh, a very uh, impressive message from Dr. Leslie, President and CEO of Jepigo, uh, she said that you can't imagine the world without health. I mean, world healthcare without nurses. It is the nurses who are the cornerstone of the COVID pandemic fight, also at the moment. And nurses are the primary healthcare providers before, during, and after the crisis. Well, the crisis is still not over. I don't know what we will be looking for. and uh, what will be the outcome after the pandemic situation and what we are going to face and how are we going to tackle she stated that we need to be sensitive to their protection as they are the largest health workforce especially presently to fight against covid pandemic and the non communicable uh, disease management she thanked all nurses for their tireless work during this covid crisis in india and also wish that nurses must get their due and so so, so ma'am we are very thankful to you for your uh, solidarity shown to our nurses then we have dr subhash sarkar our honorable member of parliament lok sabha who stated that role of nurses in today's healthcare delivery has expanded greatly and nurses as frontline covid warriors have contributed immensely in taking of covid taking care of covid patients putting their lives at risk and nurses uh, nurse led interventions he felt that and he gave example of norway and netherlands some other countries where they are coming they are giving lot of importance to the nurse led interventions which can provide improved and quality healthcare services and he too mentioned that we have to see that how do we encourage our nurses in india uh, to come up with these uh, implementation of the nursing interventions which they research and the and the outcomes and their outcomes thank you sir for your support for the nurses uh, then dr vikas mahatme 
our honorable member of parliament rajya sabha also paid thanks to all nurses for their contribution during the covid pandemic and their contribution otherwise in the healthcare delivery system of our country and he appreciated nurses working round the clock and wished all of them to be protected with the covid vaccination and uh, that there should be some health insurance policy for them and he mentioned that nurses who need vaccination and who are not able to get it they can approach them he assured for the good uh, environment for the nurses to in the clinical services and as a member of the uh, uh, agreement he assured that he would like to take up the inputs that he gets from this today's webinar of the nurses regarding how to improve their um, you know working conditions and how to overcome the shortages that he would like to take up to the parliament thank you sir for your support and your assurance at the parliament for nurses then we had message from uh, is howard catton the ceo of icn he also thanked nurses for their phenomenal work to fight against the covid pandemic the indian nurses as they are working now round the clock and really uh, going through such a crisis situation and he too stressed on the investment in education and retention of nurses that's the main take away from this his message that we have to see how do we help in these two things investment in education and retention of nurses so that we are able to strengthen our nursing services and able to provide the services constantly he also emphasized on management of nursing education to pay decent salary for nurses as well as the nurse educators and support the quality nursing education thank you very much sir for your this support and your assurance for any help needed from the inc as nna uh, that they would like to uh, extend then we had launch of the mnh program the e learning module by dr t dilip kumar and then later on it was introduced as well as given a brief orientation by dr tarun singh so dr anna prelson she introduced the uh, launch of this mnh program what is it the importance of this uh, she, she is the ceo of the maternity foundation and so she stressed on the uh, care of the mother and the newborn and how well we can help our nurses to uh, upgrade their knowledge and skills and their attitude towards the maternal and newborn care through this e module which is on mnh which is prepared and she said that this module will be available to nurses uh, all over india shortly and that she was very uh, appreciative of the support from the inc for this initiative she also acknowledged many more organizations support for this uh, e module then dr tarun uh, who is the country director for maternity foundation here also oriented the mnh e learning module as to how to log in explain to go through the chapter sub chapters and the content structure of the module then we had dr roy george the president of the trained nurses association of india who addressed and initially stressed that he is saluting nurses of the globe as well as india for their significant contribution especially in fighting against the covid pandemic at present he also paid very heartfelt tribute to nurses who lost their lives in the uh, covid war and further he stated that nurses being the largest health workforce need to have voice in the policy making at the state and the central government level so we have to see that how do we make this what strategies have to be adopted in order to have nurses voice in the policy uh, dialogue and 
he assured that TNA is always prepared for lobbying for the nurses' welfare and to make nurses' image visible. Thank you, sir, for your support for nursing. And Ms. Khurana, GK Khurana, Secretary General AIGNF, uh, also first greeted all the nurses of the globe as well as India for International Nurses Day and also paid her tribute to nurses who lost their lives to COVID pandemic while on duty. And she also stressed that nurses need to have a voice for their working conditions and no nurse's voice, she felt that no nurse's voice is adequately heard still at the state and the central government forums. There is shortage of nurses despite laying down the norms, staffing norms by the government themselves. They are not even following those norms in, the, in their own state and the central government hospitals, which is which really has to be uh, worked out with them. And she also emphasized on the togetherness among the nursing fraternity for the welfare of the nurses. And she also said that we must reconsider. We have to again approach government for reconsideration of phasing out the GNM program and have BSc nursing program only as the entry level into nursing uh, by the central government. Then Dr. Dilip Kumar, the President Indian Nursing Council, also greeted all the nurses at, at the globe as well as India for International Nurses Day. And he thanked all the dignitaries and the member, honorable members of parliament, both of them, Dr. Sarkar and Dr. Vikas Mahatma, for their messages and address uh, and delivery on this day. Uh, he also stressed some of the points from the Sone report especially in terms of investment in nursing education, creation of nursing positions, and leadership for upskilling the nurses, for improving nurses' status, as well as strengthening, the, strengthening and improving the quality of nursing education and practice. He also mentioned the Apollo Group's project for upskilling nurses and spending almost 50,000 per nurse for about 1 lakh of nurses, which they have agreed, which they have announced. And especially the word angel, how they have, uh, what it stands for, that was explained very well. And I think, uh, I think we are first time from the private sector uh, having such a support and such a contribution, financial contribution towards the welfare of the nurses. I think that's really greatly appreciated. He also outlined some of the very significant statistics in terms of number of beds available in India and the number of ICs for which we need to have very well prepared nurses to work. And the NRTS uh, data that we have, that has been requested by the PMO office of the central government, which is uh, being uh, already shared with them. And that is for letting their they want to let their states and know as to what type of nurses are already available they have and how they can make best use of them. He also stressed about the NPM program, which is under the umbrella of NHM now, and it is entrusted to them. And I think um, there are national uh, uh, centers and the state uh, uh, centers for training nurse Mid, uh, nurse practitioner midwives and uh, uh, soon uh, they are working for their uh, creating jobs and maximizing their clinical practice and also seeing that we educate enough nurses to man the these uh, primary health centers sub centers and the, especially the MLCUs the midwifery led care units he also emphasized on the bridging the gap between the nursing and nursing education and practice, which is practiced in some select institutes. But if the this bridging the gap between nursing education and practice is adopted by more and more institutions, I'm sure the nursing education as well as the nursing service status will absolutely improve, and I'm sure both the education and the service side people will be able to collaborate and 
understand each other's problems and carry on uh, and make the um, nursing uh, education and nursing service more stronger by having a good understanding. And this is a very, very important step that I think needs to be adopted. So I, I really would like to thank all the dignitaries who have given the messages we got from them, from the ICN, from the Japaigo, and from um, uh, all the three main, uh, you know, uh, organizations, are members of parliament, their addresses, the uh, TNEI, Secretary Ms. Khurana from AIGNF. I'm very thankful to all of them for being present here and give their uh, expressions and experiences and how can we go ahead in future. Here, uh, I think I would like to stop and thank everybody for their participation. And thank you for all the participations who have uh, participants who have taken out time to attend this webinar. Uh, thank you very much each uh, and everyone for being present here. Thank you, Bharti. Uh, thank you very much, ma'am, for wrapping up the whole uh, today's uh, webinar. And I request all the speakers to please put the video on. Uh, I just want to inform all the participants there are many questions. How do we get the certificates? Yes, after by next Monday, we will have uh, certificates, e certificates on our website, where in the home page, where we have written webinars and training date. You know, in the very first page on the left side, the third one, the third icon, please go there and you can download your e-certificates. So wish, I thank all the distinguished speakers today for addressing our nurses on the International Nurses Day. Wish you all a very happy Nurses Day and thank you very, very much. Okay. Thank you a lot. Thank, thank you. all the participants. I think that they all wanted to there were a lot of messages that they want to, they're they are having a 2 p.m. Um, classes. So I wish you all the best in future to all the nurses. Thank you and Namaskar. Mm -hmm. Good day.